So I thought I would make a little bit more detailed video on how I did my trolling motor install. Uh, my battery box is mounted in this space right behind the seat and that hatch. And then my uh, crate will fit back there uh, with the uh, rudder tipped up against it a little bit. And so from here, uh, we've got the main battery for the trolling motor, of course. And I decided to go through this hatch instead of the hull, uh, and I did buy a uh, replacement hatch in case uh, I decided to do something else, and that way I can have a hatch without a hole in it. And so on the back side here, you'll see that the big thick wires are for the trolling motor, and the thinner ones are for the linear actuator uh, that allows me to deploy the trolling motor, and I've got an inline fuse. Uh, for the actuator there. So again, uh, no holes in the hull of the kayak. Uh, going about it this way. And we'll move up uh, to the switch. So right here, uh, next to the right side um, little pouch here in front of the seat, I mounted the switch that runs the linear actuator at the front. And so we'll move up to the front. So similar to the back, uh, I didn't want to drill holes uh, in the hull of the kayak. So I used a wilderness, wilderness systems through hole mount here, uh, coming through this hatch. And again, I got a replacement hatch uh, for this so that uh, if I want to ever take it off, I can put a hatch on that doesn't have a hole in it. And then uh, these are both color coded and they plug differently. So the red plug cannot possibly be put into the blue plug and vice versa. Uh, the blue plug is the one that powers the linear actuator and the red plug is running up here to the trolling motor. So again the purpose of all of this uh, was that I did not want to have to use a rope to pull the foot pedal for deploying the trolling motor. And so the linear actuator right down here is going to go into action and pull the foot pedal down for us. We can deploy the trolling motor, of course, then. Put the foot pedal back up. Give it a little jerk to latch it in place. There we go. Uh, get done fishing, pull the pedal back down, go ahead and pull the trolling motor up, and secure the trolling motor back in place. And, um, I'll make a separate video uh, showing how I created this mount such that the head of the trolling motor is tipped to the side here and clears the pedal drive. And before I pop the trolling motor off, uh, I did want to mention I'm going to put an eye bolt through this hole upside down and use a bit smaller carabiner uh, so that I can very easily pop that rope on or pop the rope off uh, as I mount or dismount the trolling motor. And the other thing to look at it from the front here is the tip of the trolling motor. We can see the head back there is going to clear uh, to the side a little bit of the foot pedals. And that we're not going to come anywhere near hitting the pedal drive uh, as we were with the one objective mount. And so uh, I'll pause and come back with a, a closer look at how we accomplish that with the new top plate. Okay, and so here's the uh, puck sort of exposed there. Uh, on the one objective mount, the puck only sits back about four inches, and it's uh, parallel to the plate, so not tipped like mine. And we can see that the corner of mine is sitting back about six on that side and just about seven on that side. And so 
Uh, if you're going to attempt to create something similar to this, my suggestion would be just getting this top plate mounted on here, um, setting this with the trolling motor on it on here, and then just very carefully lifting the trolling motor off so that you can trace your template to where you want your puck to land. And you can see my scribbles of where I was marking where I wanted these plates to end up there. Something else that I did a little bit differently than one objective did is they drilled through uh, their plate here, uh, put an inset for the head of the bolt that comes through that piece right here. Uh, alternatively to that, what I did was I found where that head of that bolt was going to be and I drilled that inset on this puck underneath. So there's a bit of a cave uh, on the bottom of this puck that goes over the bolt hole because I didn't want to compromise uh, any of the strength of this UHMW. Uh, the other thing you'll notice about this plate is there's no bolt in there or in there because those bolt holes ended up lining up with these two rails and I wouldn't have been able to get a bolt through uh, or a nut on the other side. So I just replaced or created new holes so that I would still have four bolts. Then in terms of the linear actuator, um, it's uh, sitting up here and sticks out. You can see about that far. But uh, the way that it's mounted is just on the side of the one objective mount. There's a bolt going through there to a bracket holding that on. And then there's also one more bolt uh, up here that we'll talk about right now. So uh, I wanted the rope to not be dragging against this plate and either fraying the rope or damaging the plate. And so I just got a, I think it's about a six inch long bolt uh, and ran it across uh, the one objective mount from one side to the other on top of the linear actuator so that the rope dumps down through that hole around the bolt and up to the side bolt. And so no need for a pulley. Uh, the surface of that bolt is smooth and the rope runs against it. No problem. So uh, that's how uh, I decided to do this build. I hope this is helpful and I hope you have a great year of fishing.